Mina, as I just might say, we can uh, you build in at the Ministry of Information and Communication concerning the press briefing where they can get every Thursday. Now we they go inside the conference room for make we go attend the press briefing. Now let's begin this press briefing with a minute of uh, individual silent prayer. Amen. Amen. Welcome all to the Ministry of Information and Communications. This is our usual Thursday press briefing. And um, before I introduce today's speakers, let me bring you a few updates we have. On the 14th of July, the Minister of Labour has imposed temporary suspensions on two trade union groups at Sierra Leone Mean Bauxite Industry as a result of growing tensions between the two rival trade union groups for membership at the Sierra Leone Mean Bauxite Industry at Rubere Junction. The Minister of Labor and Social Security, Adekule King, imposed temporary suspensions on the operations of the United Mines Workers Union and the Union of Rail Plan Plantation Mineral Industry and Construction Employees until the Ministry comes out with a report on its findings. Tuesday this week, the Special Envoy from the Embassy of the Bolivarian Venezuelan accredited to Sierra Leone, Liberia, Chad and Equus, his Excellency David Nivers Calaballo on Tuesday paid a courtesy call on the Acting Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Honorable Solomon Jamiru Esquire, at his Star Hill office in Freetown. And the purpose of the visit was to further broaden and strengthen the bilateral ties between the two countries. Ministry of Internal Affairs is currently engaged in a massive reform, according to Mr. Sheku Kamar, the Permanent Secretary of Internal Affairs and Commissioner for Oath. His ministry is currently undergoing reforms because he has the political will to reform the ministry. The Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, in collaboration with Food Agriculture Organization, FAO, have distributed agricultural inputs to farmers in the western area to curtail their daily challenges in food security. Gwese Elungima Sam Momo, the national project consultant responsible for investment in agriculture, UNFAO, said the inputs include soya bean, Irish potatoes, and onions. These crops will make immense impact on the lives improve their livelihood, start regaining what they had lost during um, the rains and support their children in their education. Parliament of Sierra Leone on Thursday, uh, the 11th of July, debated on the bill entitled Sexual Offenses Amendment Act of 2019 and committed it to the Legislative Committee for further scrutiny in consultation with other committees in Parliament. The bill was piloted by the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Dr. Priscilla Shewitz, with the aim of amending the Sexual Offenses Act of 2012 by prescribing life imprisonment as a maximum penalty for perpetrators of rape and sexual related offenses such as penetration of minors. Sierra Leone has signed a cooperation agreement between Ghana and the Director General of Sierra Leone Petroleum Directorate, Timothy Kaba. A cooperation agreement with Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, CEO at Kintom in Freetown. The signing of the agreement is a great opportunity that will open new doors for both institutions to learn from others experience that's the update for this week
We also have in our midst the Honorable Minister of Information and Communication who will come to update us about his recent trip, especially regards media freedom. He will just give us some update on that and other related issues. And today we have in our midst um, the National Insurance Company, a government owned insurance company that was set up in 1971 and they are currently in operation in the country i'll introduce them later to you and also in our midst we have the acting director of communications uh, in the directorate of communication at the ministry of uh, information and communication we are organizing a program which is a national consultative um, conference and this conference will be held shortly uh, that is on the 23rd and 24th of July I'll do the intro after the minister has given his update and then um, welcome statement to the house I now take this opportunity to invite the Minister of Information and Communication to address members of the press Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. It's always a pleasure um, to be in your midst. Unfortunately, I missed the annual, uh, the, tri the slide China conference. I wasn't here. Um, I had a very compelling assignment out of the country. But my heart was with you even during my absence. I understand the elections went very well. I'd like to use this opportunity to congratulate all of you I mean, for setting the pace, for ensuring a free, fair, and credible elections, as I've been told. And I'd like to use this medium to very heartily, on behalf of government, congratulate um, the incoming executive and um, pledge to work with them to give them our fullest support so that they can take journalism and the welfare of journalists to another level. It's quite a pleasure. So, once again, congratulations for leading the way. I did not hear of any machete wounds. I did not hear of any gun fights. I did not hear of any dog fights. So that means, indeed, you want to be the beacon of hope for our democracy. You ought to congratulate yourselves for that. Thank you very much. Um, I would have loved to be at the conference, but I was not there for very obvious reasons. I joined um, the rest of the world at a major global media confab in London. Again, you know, these journalists are very, very important. Often a time, I've not seen the world regularly meet to discuss other people. But the whole world meets almost compellingly to discuss, to shine a light on freedoms, particularly of journalists, not only in one country, but around the world. You know, the world is concerned that 2018 went down in history as the worst year for journalists. 99 journalists killed, um, several others, scores of several others in detention centers, facing persecution, some others facing trial, in jail. So it's, it's a very, very gory picture. So the whole world is concerned. That was why the first ever you know, global, media conf global conference on media freedoms was summoned in London, jointly hosted by the Canadian and the British Foreign Secretaries, right? Many things were discussed at that conference. They think that journalists and journalism has suffered for far too long. It is now time to ensure that a congenial enabling environment is created so that journalists can practice their profession without let or hindrance, or without any debacle sword hanging over their heads. Among the key and critical issues discussed was um, issues around restrictive laws. In jurisdictions across the country, there are places where you can practice, right? Um, places like many places in the Middle East, you guys are aware, you can't report there. And so you had a lot of exiled journalists from that part of the world addressing this conference. So we left there our key resolutions, principal amongst them, to ensure that a media, a global media defense fund was set up 
and the UK started by pledging substantial amounts of money to that fund. The basic um, mandate, the actual objective of the Global Media Defense Force, Defend Fund, will be to ensure that they support journalists who are in conflict with the law in the cause of the professional practice of their duties. In the cause of the professional discharge of their duties. I underline that very deliberately. Right? So, you can't be doing it the wrong way. You can't be doing blackmailing. You can't be doing attack, defend, and collect. You can't be doing yellow journalism and you, you, you talk about accessing that form. That form is for people who, in the honest, sincere, and diligent execution of their, their duties, get in conflict with the law. Yeah, so UNICEF will be managing that fund. Um, UNESCO, UNESCO will be managing it, sorry. So the Canadians pledge some substantial amounts of money like the Brits did. So we are on course. Everybody is concerned about you know, media pluralism, media freedoms, to ensure that you are able to make your contributions. Because it is proven around the world that media countries that have um, respect for media rights, media freedoms, are very prosperous countries. You look at Norway and Sweden, for example, on the global, or on the on the global um, human um, media media freedom in index. You know they, they rank very high. They're doing very well. So we believe that with media freedoms, a lot can be realized. How does that relate to us in our country here? This government clearly recognizes that the journalists, the media, play a critical role in national development. That is why, for the very first time in 58 years. We have budgeted subventions for sludge. We are working with sludge to identify a suitable um, landed property to construct uh, a media house, a uh, sludge house, whatever name they choose to give it. Um, the last government of Mr. Kelvin Lewis started that conversation with His Excellency the President, and he is very, 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 very upbeat about it. He has reassured them, he will work with them to ensure that this happens. Again, I told the world, this country is... Um, quite a shining light on the hilltop of Africa when it comes to media freedoms. At the moment, you may not know this, we have about 208 registered newspapers. We have about 150 registered radio stations. We have about 25 registered um, television stations. Um, we have 15 uh, newspapers awaiting licenses. We have five TV stations awaiting licenses and more. This speaks to our record of creating the environment for the media to, su to survive to, and thrive. All we ask of, like we have always done, is responsible journalism. Responsible journalism. I, you know, I don't necessarily have to like what he writes, but just make sure it's responsible, it's constructive, if it's criticism, because at the end of the day, this is the only country we all have. Let us portray it the best way we can. Okay? Yeah, um, I normally don't want to say much. I want to leave the rest for Q and A because I know whether I say it or not, you ask me. So there are other people here who might need to talk to you. So I'm going to leave it at that for now, while and await next steps. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the Honorable Minister of Information and Communication. Now to our briefing proper. The Ministry of Information and Communication, in partnership with other strategic stakeholders across government, will be holding a two-day consultative conference on the theme, Leveraging Digital Technologies to Position Sierra Leone on the Path to Economic Transformation on the 23rd and 24th of July 2019 at the Golden Tulip Essential Kimbima Hotel, Abadin at 9.30 a.m. This two-day conference is aimed at harnessing inputs from across governance including ICT telecom sectors, multi-stakeholder platforms, development partners and MDAs at local and central government levels to adopt concrete steps for collaboration and partnership towards digital transformation. In order to enhance the ministry's vital role as an enabler to economic growth and social progress, the conf conference will seek to ascertain strategic interventions from participants in the areas of leadership, governance, coordination and partnership, 
digital access and infrastructure, etc. To have more insight on this and much more, we have the acting director of the, uh, from the Directorate for Communications and ICT in the Ministry of Information and Communication, Mr. Mohamed Mumini Jalo and team here to address members of the press. You're welcome, sir. Uh, good afternoon, all. Thank you, Mr. Turi, for this opportunity. You all know that the Ministry of Information and Communication has responsibility for formulating, administering, managing, and developing information, broadcasting, communication technology, the post and career policies and strategies for government. In addition, the Ministry also oversees government ownership interests in ICT-related institutions to fit them in the whole of government agenda for socioeconomic development. So when the Honorable Minister took over, he set himself a clear vision in the context of His Excellency's first address to Parliament where key steps that government intends to take to imbibe ICT as a viable step towards our socioeconomic development. <clears throat> the vision was that by 2029, Sierra Leone will become a digitally inclusive society with ICT as the means to unleash the innate potential of every citizen for socioeconomic development. This vision is also consistent with the UN SDG goals for no leave no one behind and the Africa we want in the Africa Union Vision 2063. So in order for us to realize the vision that the minister had set himself and the sector, we had identified key strategic areas that we needed to develop policies and strategies to actualize the goal. One, you agree with me that for a sector like this, it requires a focused leadership, integrated governance, coordination and partnership for us to judiciously use the resources available so as to make ICT part of our society. The other important area that the ministry has identified for citizens to benefit from the tremendous potentials ICT possesses is digital infrastructure and access. It means as a government, we have the responsibility to create the space for our citizens to participate in the digital world. But also to that, as part of the free education, program of the government, the ministry is also of the view that we have to improve on the ICT human capacity, develop the digital skills of our citizens, as well as create knowledge for transformation. And one of the key policy statements made during His Excellency's address in Parliament was that this government will create an electronic governance system. Electronic governance basically means the coordinated and planned use of ICT to support all core actions of government. So basically, as part of his ideas of managing state in a judicious way, ICT is one of the pillars that the government intends to use. But critical to the five that I have named is that our citizens must have confidence in the space to operate. So therefore, this ministry treats cybersecurity very seriously. In fact, that is why, for the first time in the history of this country, last year in about December, this uh, ministry hosted the first conference on cybersecurity with support from the Council of Europe. In that conference, we have drafted the first cyber crime law. You agree with me that currently our law enforcement uh, 
institutions find it very difficult to deal with cyber-related crime. But with the passing of this law that is now at the Law Officers Department, we are sure that the Ministry will be creating an environment that is uh, friendly, an environment that people can have confidence in using digital technology, etc., etc. So basically, the six pillars that I have named are pillars that are based on the African Union recommendation for countries to develop strategies for their digital transformation. You agree with me that uh, <coughs> digital transformation holds huge potential to grow the economy, improve people's life, accelerate progress towards the attainment of the sustainable development goals, as well as the implementation of the national development goal that was recently launched by His Excellency the President. The essence of this two-day conference, therefore, is to harness input from across governance to agree on concrete strategies towards Sierra Leone's digital transformation so that as citizens we can march into the new era of digital revolution. You also agree with me that currently the world is experiencing another revolution. You've heard of the Industrial Revolution. Today we are experiencing a fourth revolution, a revolution that is digitally driven, which is called the fourth revolution. Therefore, for Sierra Leone to be able to participate in this digitally driven revolution, we want to prepare strategies that we believe, if implemented, we strategically position Sierra Leone as not only a country that embraces technology for effectiveness and eff efficiency, but as a country that will prepare its current generation for the future. So therefore, the, the two-day conference will invite people from across the governance spectrum. We have sent out invitations to the private sector players, the mobile network operators, the ISPs, small and medium enterprises that operate in the ICT sector. We have sent invitation to local councils so that they speak on behalf of the people. We have sent out invitation to media houses, NGOs, non-state actors, because we want this plan to be owned by the people. We want to hear the aspirations of the people as far as taking up digital technology. I'll just update you briefly on some of the effort that the ministry is also undertaking while we plan for a bigger interventions. Like I said, when the minister took over, he has set himself quite an ambitious goal. The first thing he wanted to achieve was to create a predictable and more conducive regulatory environment. So for this reason, currently, some of the laws that are renamed below are either now at the stage of committee level, cabinet level, or at the law officer's department. The electronic transaction B is now at committee stage waiting for parliamentary enactment. This bill wishes to enhance our participation in electronic transactions. It will also, for the first time, allow citizens to administer electronic evidence in court. As you will know that currently in Sierra Leone, electronic evidences are not admissible in court. They are, you have to admit them either in paper base or physically. But this law will now allow us, like any other jurisdiction, to be able to administer electronic evidence. So transactions that partake, you partake in online will now be admissible as an evidence. For instance, if you, are, if you email a colleague, say, okay, I have this phone to sell, and then he agrees to buy the phone, he can submit that as an evidence of a contract that you entered into. We have also drafted the first uh, cybercrime bill that is now at the Anthony General's office. Like I said, this bill will actually sanitize the cyberspace. The cyberspace is a critical space that we require for our socioeconomic growth. But most importantly, this ministry together with its partners has also reviewed the current telecom law. The current telecom law was enacted in 2006 with a post-conflict mindset. We had just come out of the war 
So all we wanted at that time is let's have a law that we regulate the sector. At that time, there was nothing like broadband. There was nothing like 3G, 4G. There was nothing like smartphone, etc., etc. But a lot has happened in the sector. Sierra Leone has landed a submarine cable that now links Sierra Leone to the rest of the world, opening a gateway for more cyber operations. We have laid terrestrial fiber cable to most of our district, and government is still planning to extend that facility to the remainder of the country. So therefore, the ministry has thought it fit that the current law no longer suffice to regulate the sector. So we have taken a holistic review of that law and proposed a new national electronic communication bill that will provide predictable and uh, conducive regulatory environment for our five private sector players. This law is now ready for validation by cabinet and once that is done, law officer department will give their legal opinion and the parliament will enact it. For instance, in the past, there have been instances where mobile companies will, will complain that, well, this morning, Natcom just woke up and fined us. That will be a thing of the past because this law now clearly spells out procedures for Natcom, whether uh, operators violate rules, what are the procedures you will take. And the operators will know clearly the red lines in their operations so that they know that if you cross this line, this is the action that will be taken. The other very critical law that we are working on currently is the data protection and privacy b data protection is about protecting the privacy of citizens as you are aware for instance quite recently national civil registration authority collected a whole lot of information from citizens this is going to be part of a citizens register that will be formed that will be a critical a critical pillar of our digital economy because for you to operate in a digital environment People have to have a digital identity. Just as you have a physical identity in the physical world, either by house address or by physical location of places, in the cyberspace also, you need to have a cyber of, or you, you need to have a digital identity. So therefore, for us to safeguard the privacy, to protect the privacy of our citizens, we are drafting a bill that will be titled Data Protection and Privacy Bill. This bill will definitely protect the, 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 the citizens from an unwanted harassment in the, in the digital space. A few other things that the ministry is currently undertaking, I'm going to be brief, Mr. Ture, is that uh, currently, in terms of uh, within governance, you realize, those of us who are working in government, who realize that even communication amongst go within government is very difficult. For instance, if the Honorable Minister wants to call now the Minister of Finance, he will either have to use his mobile phone or maybe use another means. So we are trying to create a condition wherein government officials can contact each other in a seamless manner within a network that is owned by government. So we are currently working on an integrated government-wide information system that will allow us to communicate uh, voice, data, and video. So for instance, some meetings can be conducted through video, video call, etc., etc., to minimize the wastage in travels and things like that. Another very critical project that we are taking also is that you realize that His Excellency has put a lot of emphasis on attendance. He has been, he has been going physically to locations to ensure that uh, government workers report for duty on time. But he cannot spend his valuable time monitoring that system. So this ministry is now collaborating with National Civil Registration Authority to put in place an electronic time attendance system. This system will definitely now be a system that will monitor government workers in and out of workplaces. We are currently installing trials at the Minister of Finance, Accountant General, and the uh, Minister of Finance, and we'll be extending it to various other locations. Once we are satisfied with the trials, it will be rolled out across government, even out of Freetown, so that government workers will now be time, will now be able to track them when they report for duties and when they leave uh, uh, workplaces electronically. And this, this also will enable government to clean up the payroll because, in fact, currently when we are installing it, it's rejecting certain uh, names that we have submitted because they have problems. With their, uh, with, their, with their identities in the payroll. So it's a means of also sanitizing the pay system. Last but not the least also is uh, in all of this, as we prepare for 
a digitally enabled economy, government is also putting in place modalities for its institutions to benefit. So we are currently trying to put in place a government-wide network that will interconnect government agencies so that when we transact, it will be within government. So in essence, this is what I will provide you as a brief now. And the conference <coughs> is open for every citizen to bring in your suggestions because the plan that will be agreed upon will be a national plan that our development partners will support as we prepare our digital future. Thank you, Mr. Toure. The National Insurance Company is the government-owned insurance company set up in 1971, and whatever proceeds it has goes to the government consolidated fund. The new managing director, Abdul Kagbo, assumed office in 2018, supervised by the National Commission for Privatization, NCP. The new managing director and his team have developed strategies to guarantee the companies uh, to position in order to provide effective insurance services. These strategies include shift payment of claims, rigorous marketing efforts, and effective servicing of their customers. To know whether these strategies yielded the expected results or outcomes, we have in our midst the managing director for the NIC, Mr. Abdul Kabo, and is also accompanied by the life manager, Mr. Saidu Samura. Just stand up for identification, sir, so that the press will see you. And also the marketing manager, uh, Mr. Benedict Robin, and um, the assistant PR and marketing manager. Ila no. So the the managing director has the podium and um, he will brief us about the updates. Thank you. Thank you. A very good morning to all. Yes. Um, first of all, I want to extend my profound and sincere gratitude to the Minister for giving us the opportunity of coming here today, actually meeting with these uh, media houses. Well, as you've heard the introduction, as you heard from the introduction, we are NIC. NIC, of course, a national insurance company of Sierra Leone, created in 1971. It's a company, of course, our, all our proceeds go to the government of Sierra Leone. It is owned 100% 110% by the government of Sierra Leone. The shareholders, of course, is the Sierra Leone people. And of course, the beneficiaries of NIC is all the people of Sierra Leone. And then since I've, I took over NIC on the 1st of October 2018, of course, NIC was in the, in the red. Well, we inherited a very bad state. The economy was very poor. But when I came in, I came in with uh, some very good tranquilizers, injecting the insurance company to come up from where it was, almost dead and gone. But now, thank God, and I always want to say thank God to uh, the new direction, of course, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, who gave me the opportunity came to come to Sierra Leone and inject NIC to, to from where it was, almost dead, and now it was, it's been resurrected. And I have to assure you that since I took over NIC from the, from the bank balances, we were very, very down. Now we can boast to the world that NIC is back. We've paid all our claims. For instance, the police, we had inherited a very bad uh, claims program with them. And from 2016, their claims were not paid. And today, standing here, we paid over three billion from the police. And of course, media houses like our work house, like Shakandas, Dollar Stores, to name a few. And also, we are inter international partners who are reinsurance. We managed to pay 90% of our debt with them because the company was not paying the insurance company, the reinsurance company. And I found it that. 
if you are running an insurance company, the acid test of any insurance company is to pay claims. And how do you pay those claims? You have to be in the good books of the reinsurance company, who you share your 70% of the risk to them. So that is why today we've already done that. We are in capable hands of the reinsurance companies, and NIC is good to go. So, Sierra Leoneans, I will want to reassure you that today NIC is the leading insurance company in Sierra Leone, and just recently we won the best insurance award which uh, we can it's been displayed there displayed there by by the PR of NIC so NIC has now regained its past glory which has been known all nationwide as a mama for insurance today we are free from debt now we have huge balances in our bank state, in our bank accounts and I can I tell, we are not shy to say it, since nine months now, we've already had in a bank all over the country, bank balance have about 20 billion in our account. So from what we inherited, 20 billion loans. After paying our debts from all the conditions, what now we are we stand. So we are now clear with our debts. We can assure that we are, want to assure everybody in Sierra Leone that come and insure with us and then we well of course we rebranded NIC. I want to also bring that to the people. What I did is and my able team, we used a new method of rebranding by taking NIC to the people of Sierra Leone and also assuring because people of Sierra Leone are not aware of much of our insurance. So we very much encourage our people so that they will insure their lives and properties especially with the new Insurance Act of 20, 2016, the Compulsory Act, we state that you should insure your property if you're living in a building, if you're living in a house which is more than two stories, you should insure it. So we are encouraging our people so that you insure your, your properties, your life with us, your loved ones, so that you'll be safe, so that you, we will take over your responsibility. NIC, we do all type of businesses, especially in insurance, motor insurance, of course, marine, we did what the covers would cover everything and of course we have our indemnity plans, we have our policies, life, of course we have life, our life pensions and everything and we even have, now we've introduced another policy which is called burial insurance and of course we have another arm of the endowment policy which is money back, the last arm of the down end policy, which is like Osusu. We have that is a life insurance cover as well. You have you profit four percent from your savings into your own coffers. And it's a, it's assured that the sum assured that insure with will be given to you by the appointment the the the, the, the beneficiary appoint and they so this is the standing today of NIC. NIC is a leading insurance company today in Sierra Leone. So I want to reassure all everybody and I want to encourage even the media house to please come and insure with us. So, I, so far, thank you very much for listening to me. I want to also thank my brother, the minister, who has given us the opportunity to address you this afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon all. We've all heard what our managing director have just said. I'll just give a brief you know, about the National Insurance Company. My name is Benedict Robin. I'm the marketing manager of the National Insurance Company. NIC, the Mummy for All Insurance Company, Sierra Leone. NIC brand mission seeks to take insurance to the people create awareness about the policies covered in the Compulsory Insurance Act of 2016, encourage people to insure and protect our loved ones, ourselves and our property against unforeseen contingency. The National Insurance Company, being the first indigenous insurance company in the country, was set up in December 1971 and started operation in December 1972. As the only government-owned insurance company, our responsibility to is to seek the best insurance for our people 
by giving the information needed to protect them against unforeseen contingencies. Our mission. Our mission is to maintain leadership in the insurance industry and effectively contribute towards national economic development by providing quality, profitable and competitive service to a well-motivated workforce. Staff. Our team is headed by the Managing Director, Mr. Abu Kabo, supported by the Senior Manager, Mrs. Fatima Conte, Mr. Brahma Bawa, Chief Accountant, a Technical Manager, Mr. Osho Salter, who does all the underwriting, and the host of experienced staff committed to the company, including myself, Mr. Saidu Samura, the Life Manager, and Ms. Noah, who is the, the PR and Assistant Manager of our institution. At NIC, we transact all kinds of business because we, we, we are class A, we transact all the five clients, motor, marine, accident, fire, and life assurance. We offer specialized type of insurance cover such as contractors all risk, the banker's blanket bond, advanced payment guarantees, performance bond, liability and aviation insurance. On request from clients, the commit through a support of international reinsurance brokers can affect insurance cover in hard currencies. Because we are a national company, we are not only based in Freetown. Within the, the, the capital city, we are at 135 Kisi Road for the eastern part of Freetown, PW Com Compound at Padenba Road, just next door to the Pad Central Prison, and 26 Godrich Road, Lomley. Our head office is at 1820 Walpole Street, just a stone throw to the cutting free. At Bo, we are 8 Bojon Street, Kenema, 4 Damal Road, Kenema, Connor, 6 Kotamba Road, Koido, and at Makini, St. Lawrence B. Lee, Azolini Highway, just up with the NP, NP Philly Station in front of the Unimac. These are some of our major clients. P people may think it's, it's because. Be, it, people may think NIC is a government owned. We, we not only insure government properties, but also have private companies. Of which we do handle their cover. For example, a scan handling the Medco, Solon, Orange, UNHCR, Union Trust Bank, Shakandas, of which they are one of our clients who have just paid one of the highest claim in the history of NIC. Now, in insurance, you pay or buy something that is intangible. You only realize when there is a loss. And on the list, there is some of our uh, claims that we've paid quite recently. One of them in uh, 2017 we paid G Shakandans and so on four billion two hundred and thirty two million yet NIC is, uh, is in operation. That was a partial loss on a fire policy of which um, there was a fire on the factory at um, Kisi Dockyard. Of course so long we've been paying them uh, for so long transportation these are on, on motor insurance they are total write off vehicles involving road accidents where we had to pay for all of them. We can see uh, uh, the uh, individuals, office of the ombudsman, uh, um, Vita Foam, etc., etc. Quite recently, uh, China Henans, we, we paid China Henan $220 million for a vehicle, which was a total write off. These are, these are few of the claims NIC has been paying. Now, on the screen are contact numbers, of course, in insurance, customer service is very important. And so these are numbers of officers at our various outlets and branches where they can be easily contacted. As our MD was saying just now, we are rebranding our company. And I want to commend him because within the shortest possible time, he has joined NIC. I must confirm that he is the chief marketing officer. He's the ch he, he goes all around. He's not an armchair MD. He's all around uh, town, even to the provincial, over weekends, whether weekends or not. He's, ha he's out there with me and other staff making NIC reach his past glory. And um, few achievements he has made within 30 days of assuming office, NIC had a website of which previously we had known. We've developed a website for the company for the company which is www.nic/sl.sl. After which, improving 
in in marketing we have what we call swords our strength our weakness and our opportunities he has looked into them and one of the the achievements he has made quite recently and i see we have developed a new software in our in our institution because he, he seen he looked at the previous one that we are looking is a bit archaic so he said now you people let's move on to the digital world so we've now got a new software which nic will be operating and uh, there are other things he has been done in terms of capacitating staff he has been doing very well training because training goes a very long with capacitating staff he has been motivating he has he has done um one or two other important things because when you have a quality working environment it gives the staff uh, it motivates the staff for them to to fully partake in, in, into their uh, jobs now in the insurance industry the salary insurance commission which governs all the, the insurance company insurance in, in companies in Sierra Leone has uh, enforced certain policies which are now compulsory for example tenantable properties all tenantable properties are now compulsory by law employers liability all employers having five employees and above must have an employers liability insurance which will cover them in event of a work-related accident um, the insurance company will indemnify them compulsory insurance for professionals that is accountants engineers doctors and the like are now compulsory and um, as we finish this post conference the team will be moving now to Bourne Kenema because we are not only sensitizing the people of Freetown we are moving countrywide to make sure the message goes to them we are our role is to take insurance to the people and bring the risk back to the to the company NIC is the mummy for all insurance company of course we we've now enforcing no premium no cover no insurer shall allow create on premium people on an ins insurance policy this, this simply means that insurance premium payment shall be prerequisite to a valid contract of insurance premium must be paid upfront for all annual insurance premium. we assure you of a quality service insurance guarantee restoration of property and provide support to the beneficiaries in times of unforeseen contingency NIC we take the lead to rebrand an entire industry by giving the people the information needed so that they make Inform insurance decision. Thank you. As you not only seen from the press conference where the Ministry of Information and Communication can get every Thursday, now the Ministry Conference Room. You not only seen to the updates where the Minister of Information and Communication, Mohamed Rahman Swari, as he give updates about the conference where he attend at London and also the outcome of the conference. And also inside the press conference, we beget the new managing director for National Insurance Company, Wena Abdul Kagbo, as INSEF talk about the rebranding of the National Insurance Company. Me wake out this program to na today. Me your name na Isatu Smai Sise. So till we meet again to another weekly press conference. I say tata.